we had a gun dead. Gun dead. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Love line. Cord. Cord. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's the love line. Yeah. There you go, Adam. Yeah. You all right? No, I'm, I'm angry. 1 800 L O V E 191 is the phone number. I'm Dr. Drew. That's Adam Carolla. Yada, yada, yada. You're pre pissed because. No goddamn place to park around here, but number two, I got the short mic cord, which uh, means I can't get into the full shuttle launch position. I normally like to do the show from. Switch this? Mm, I don't think that's. I think that's six of one, half that. Yeah, all right. Wait a minute. How are you going to use mine? Uh, Hold on. I don't mind leaning forward. This is fine. (laughs) Hold on one second. That's not going to work. What's wrong with this? Anderson's pissed. That's not going to work. All right. Hey, I'm good. You good? I'm fine. All right. I'm fine. Chill there, Anderson. Everything's looking good. All right. Uh, what's going on tonight? Well, the offspring are in here tonight. Dexter and Noodles are both here from the band. And, uh, Drew, if you'd pay attention to me for a second, you yes, would uh, finish this part of the plug. Yes. Oh, I'd finish it? Are, are you, do you have information on the benefit that they're here to plug or any of that stuff? Do you have any of that information? Do you have a piece of paper that's right underneath your hand that has things highlighted on it? No? If you recall, when I was asked about that, I was told Adam has that information. No, you had your head buried in a goddamn magazine, and you wouldn't put your head up. I'm reading his bio. You wouldn't put your head up. And I said, and where is it? I know nothing. Why is it underneath you? Because I didn't know it was here until you brought it to my attention. How did it get underneath your hand? I don't know how it got here, Adam. Do you think? Let me let me understand this. I'm willfully trying not to cooperate with you. No, is that let me no, read what's here. I, I'm not, I'm saying you're Life not paying rolls on. attention. A nonprofit group founded by former surf star and quadriplegic Jesse Billauer, whose six-page bio I was reading here while you were screwing around with the stuff on the on right, the Life Rolls right. On. Except for when that. the show began, you wouldn't put it down and tilt your head up. That thing was handed to you, or I handed it to you, uh, right as the show began. That's okay. All. Whatever. All right, listen, you were doing your job, fine. This one's a push. But yeah. I'll be back, my friend. I no doubt. You're, you're in a bad <laughs> way, because you didn't get a parking place with your name on it. <sighs> oh, you probably right. parking no, I'm good. All right, away. all right, I'm good. All right, man. Hey, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, snap that. Man. All right, so uh, anyway. Did you get a weekend off at least? Yes. Yeah. No, I worked uh, I work half day on Saturday. No, uh, that's the problem here. I know. All Seriously, right. Seriously, I can tell when you've been working too much. All right. Well, it, don't worry. It's all, it's all going to end soon. <laughs> you know, people, it, it's, it's very comical, you know, with Jimmy going to ABC and people worrying about me and saying, uh, well, Adam's keeping a pretty stiff upper lip. <laughs> Nothing for him to do. <laughs> Listen. I, I go home and pray. I get in an uh, accident on a surfboard every night so I can sit in a wheelchair and not have to go to work. That's yeah. my dream come true. Oh, I know. Listen, I know. I, uh, I would like to have a fundraiser to figure out how I could get into a wheelchair. Just a fundraiser to keep you living the life you've become accustomed. And forget Actually, about I don't want a wheelchair. I want wheels on my sofa because I'm going to need a little bit more room to move around. All right. So, anyway, we will talk about uh, all that and uh, tell you guys... Uh, how you can uh, donate to this worthy cause and uh, talk to Dexter Noodles and all that stuff uh, after the first break we take. All right. All right. Quint? Yes. You're 15? I certainly am. What's up? Well, I've been listening for a couple of years, and uh, I've got a couple questions, see. Um, all right. First order of business, I love Crank Anchors. It's brilliant. Thank you. On tonight, 1030. I watched it already. It's brilliant. Oh, great. I want to go to Hawaii. Yay! 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 I want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, second order of business, Man Show. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've been listening for a long time. I'm kind of wondering why you guys aren't on TV anymore. It's crying shame you're not. Um, you should be. Drew got too old. Yeah. yeah. Drew put on about 80 pounds. His hair went gray. He's just not not uh, in touch with the young hip crowd anymore. Well, yeah. I don't have the same kind of uh, matinee idol good looks that Adam has. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Yeah. The, it's like, okay, on to the next thing. The, the biggest question of them all, I've been listening for a couple of years now, like I said, and all your bogus calls you get, it all comes down to the mason jar. Now, I don't understand this. I've never heard the origin. Right. That's, the uh, that's a good point. That's and good and before we put you on hold, any other questions? Oh, that's about it. I all right. Gonna... Fantastic, Quinn. <laughs> well, this is, this is all, we, since we never do good radio. Right. And I, 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 to be fair to me, I attempt to do, do good radio about twice a month. 
Drew tries it about uh, he tries about half a time a decade, yeah, I, yeah. I would say. Well, I, and I will shoot you down for trying to do good radio. That's true, too. So. Uh, because this, this is true. People listen to the show, we're referring to something, and they don't know what the origin of it is. How long ago, Drew? Probably five years ago, wouldn't you say? Five years ago, a guy called in. From Tucson. Right. right who uh, three or four times got through with these believable calls, had, right. us, had us completely going. Right. And at the end, the, the punchline was his girlfriend... He couldn't do whatever it was and couldn't get her to do whatever he was leading up to because she had an anus the size of a mason jar. That's right. right. And it got to the point where this guy had a very unique voice, and I could identify his voice the moment he came on. Drew is amazing, yeah. much uh, much like one of those uh, dogs that can uh, sniff out weed at the right. airport. Not good for much else, but amazing gift in that department. Right. I, because I just hear the sound of my own voice echoing in my head, don't even know what anyone else's voice sounds like. As a matter of fact, when people talk to me, I hear it in my voice, <laughs> even chicks. It's as, as if my whole life is being wow. dubbed in by me. Oh, that's good. I tough. looped my whole life back to me. It's Malkovich, Malkovich? <laughs> yeah. Crawler, crawl. Yeah, but Drew has a very keen sense for this, and to his credit, recognized the guy's voice a couple of times. So we started busting him. We started busting him, and then it's unclear at this point whether he then got other people to call in and do it because his voice was recognizable, which seems to make sense. And then eventually once something catches on, if it's good enough, like uh, anus the size of a mason <laughs> jar, <laughs> who could then, it, then it sweeps the yeah, nation. Who could resist? It's like the Macarena. So it became sort of, I think, some sort of challenge that everyone, and people were picking up the, the baton not even understanding what the history was of what they were doing. Unacceptable. That, that's yeah. right. And I, I would I would further say this that that statement became the representation of a bogus call right. on this if, show. If, if they were going to blow their cover or, or, or identify themselves as bogus, that's, that's the how. way you yeah. would do it. Yeah. All right, Eric. Yep. You're 27. Yes, I am. What's up? I was wondering if uh, the fact that I have a zero sperm count could have been caused by my mom smoking pot when she was pregnant with me. Can you have a zero sperm count, or is it just as good as zero once it gets under a certain count? They told me it was zero. You can, no have, sperm. You can be not producing sperm, yeah. Uh, what's your testosterone situation like? Um, they said I had normal levels. Normal testosterone, not producing any sperm. Hmm. And who said it was due to smoking pot during pregnancy? No, I, I, I know that my mom smoked pot when she was pregnant with me, and I was wondering if that could have been a cause. Because it's an interesting question. I know of no data to, that has documented that. Okay. Well, everybody, I mean, half the country would have a zero sperm count. I mean, half the country whose parents were pregnant, you know, people between the age of uh, 40 and 30 would probably be screwed. I mean, you but know. He's not saying that she just smoked, you know, occasionally, right? What she, she do? She was attached to a bong for nine months. She said every day she did. There you go. Every day. And you're 27. Yes. And she wasn't aware of that in uh, 1977 or whatever the hell it was, 79? 74. 74. Wait a minute. Where am I? We're 2002. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you were born 75. in 74? Yes, I was. Good times. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, to be fair to me, you know, technically you'd think 75, you know, okay. 2002. But uh, anyway... She, she didn't know that back then? I mean, is she stupid, or was she just hooked on it, or what? Um, I don't know. I, I guess she just didn't care. All right. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay with her now? What I mean, I know, I know you want to pin this on her, but this probably isn't it. Yeah, all right. All she, right. She was just more concerned with trying to clear herself, you know, trying to convince me that it wasn't her fault. So, I was hoping well, I well, mm. it, well, here's the deal. You should be pissed at your mom no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this sperm thing, it's funny how you, you, you and your mom are arguing over sperm, but the sperm thing is, is not the, uh, that's not the point of this argument. The point is, is she cared so little about her uh, offspring, going to be in here in uh, 15 Your, minutes, that's by the way. Radio. That's great radio. Trop, great radio. Trop, trop. Great radio. Great <laughs> radio. That, that she smoked, she smoked uh, pot, you know, while she was pregnant, and I think that hurts you, and, and, it, is, and it should, and you shouldn't forgive her for that. All right. All right, but 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 don't try to make a case. You know what I mean? I think people they try to present a case. Right, it sort of doesn't matter. No, it's yeah. academic. It's, yeah. an, it's an emotional thing. Yeah.
Well, plus she's probably she's an addict, right? And so he probably has all kinds of stuff about that too. But th this is like a guy who's going to cheat with his uh, girlfriend, fiance, or wife's best friend, but he can't get it up. Yeah. So he argues technically that he didn't get her because, but she's interested in the motive. Right. Right. He did too much blow and couldn't get a boner. <laughs> Well, that attempted to yank himself off, and he still couldn't do it. So his argument is, I didn't have sex with her, but it's just as, just as good. Right. And the fact that the sperm may not have been caused uh, by the marijuana doesn't let her off the hook. Right. Jeremy? Yeah. You're 16? No, I'm 21. Okay. You're 21? Yeah. All right. Um, I did not meth for about two and a half years, and I've been clean now for going on almost three months, and... I went from basically, I guess you could say, from like a 30-minute to 45-minute man in bed, with, and now down to like maybe 30 seconds to a minute. <laughs> so it was taking you longer to have an orgasm when you were doing speed? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. That, that, yeah. The speed, you're lucky if you can get an erection when you're doing speed. But that's and, speed. That's you're on drugs. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm, trying to, I'm kind of worried here. I'm kind of curious. Not worried, but curious. You know, is there anything I can do to make that... To, to make it a little bit longer because I'm trying to more or less please my wife. Is she complaining? Yeah. She's complaining. Why don't I believe that? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess he's just doing the complaint math. You're lasting 30 seconds whether there's an actual complaint l lodged, you know, lodged well, or you're just thinking about complaining. Is, is it really 30 seconds now? Mm, yeah. Hey, Jeremy? Yes. All right. What do you do for a living? I work in, at uh, uh, Hynix. It's, uh, they make uh, computer memory. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds specific. <laughs> what do you do over there? I'm drive forklift? No, I, dr I uh, push a mop around all day. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's ironic. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one thing when a guy... You know when a guy says... Uh, well, where do you work? And it's like, I work at a uh, meat packing factory. Yeah, what do you do? Maintenance, you know, cleanups, that kind of stuff. Uh, hose, hose the place down, hose the mats down. All right, you go like, yeah, yeah, all right. But it's got to make it that much worse when a guy works at a real top-end biocomputer lab or something. And it's like, what do you do? Scrub the toilet. Now, all of a sudden, you go, you go huh? Oh. <laughs> but you know, the funny part is, too, is... I know what you do too, Drew. You got the guy goes. Hey, I I uh, work at a biopharmaceutical uh, computer uh, analyzation lab, and you go, huh? Like your brain is going, what? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! No, well, wait I'm, a minute. I'm just thinking bogus. So I'm thinking, all right. I'm thinking, my God, I'm wrong. And then you go, well, what? What do you do? Uh, I work at the cafeteria. They got a small cafeteria in the back. I clean out the uh, tray that's underneath the soft drink thing mainly. Sometimes I drink it, you know, and you go. Now, all of a sudden, it all comes into focus. You go, yep, okay, good. Still working. Let's get on with it. Spidey sense? Perfect. Jeremy. Yeah. I'm glad you're uh, off the drugs, by the way. Are you in a program? No, I'm not. Are you depressed? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you, you sound depressed. Are you smoking pot regularly? No, I, 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 I quit. Basically, I quit drugs to keep my family together. What do you mean? What's the, are you taking nothing now? No substances? None. I don't even drink. Well, good. Uh, if you if you start going down the path again, you will reactivate the whole disease. But I'll, I'll tell you what, people that are drug addicts that stop doing drugs tend to get very depressed and very anxious. It's one of the things that the program does is sort of help manage all that or repair some of those feelings. And one of the things that causes premature ejaculation is anxiety. So you might want to look into getting involved in NA or AA and work in a program. And some of these anxiety symptoms should settle down, and that might actually improve your performance. I love the way I have to convince people to do healthy things because it'll help their penis. Yep. Right? Isn't that nice? That's the common thread. Actually, mine's not quite that thick, but... Um, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you got to give her oral sex. That's the key. All right. All right, buddy? That, that, that Real is... quick. Oh, here no, no, really no, comes no. the bogus call. Yeah. And uh, the man show rock. Thank you, buddy. Nothing bogus about that. All right. Yeah, whatever. And listen, I know I made fun of this Jeremy earlier. <laughs> Genius. He'll be running that company in months. What an intellect. Yeah. <laughs> instead of the one instead of the one mopping the floors, Jeremy, it's gonna be the one handing the mops out. Yeah. Tell you what. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying, Drew? I hear you. Catherine? Yes. You're twenty? Yeah. What's up? Um, I separated with my husband last September. 
and I have a kid, and I just moved down here from Virginia. And I was wondering, how long um, should I date before dating again? And also, how do I tell guys I don't want to have sex with them? How long should you date without before dating again? Yeah, how long should I wait till dating? Wait till dating. Wait. Yeah. Um, so, what's it been? September. Um, since sep last September. A year. Oh. That's fun. Start oh, dating. It's been a year. Yeah, start dating. She says yeah. that's half your adult life when you're 20. Yeah. All right, start dating. Now, why the no Start sex? tonight. Well, because I, I have a kid already. I don't want to have another one. Not yet. Well, they got uh, birth control for that, right? Well, I, I had that, <laughs> and I got pregnant. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. What'd you have? Well, I was, I, we used a condom, but I don't like birth control myself. I'm not a birth control kind why? of Why? It, it, it does bad things to me. What? I don't know. Because it, it's kind of like an antidepressant stimulant, and it always, anything like that really messes with my head. Well, maybe uh, maybe you need to find the right one. You get depressed, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I do. I get depressed on it. Well, maybe there's different combinations. There's different there are ways to avoid those kinds of side effects. Well, I'd rather just not have sex and not... All right. Well, you may not have dates then, though, because <laughs> that's what the guys are going to be interested in. Yeah, and I don't know, should I tell them, like, right then and there? No, 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 no. Listen, I, women, they, uh, they map their... They map their social life out like uh, Magellan, mm -hmm. but then, ironically, they don't map anything else out. <laughs> There's the two things that women map out: the social life and weddings. Nothing, everything else. No, nope, they haven't given it any thought. No thought at all to anything else. I don't know why why you have to make this declaration. First off, when you're going to date, when you're not going to date. I, you know, I guess as a woman, you got guys asking you, hey, if you got a guy who asks you and you're attracted to the guy and he seems like a good guy, then you go. If he doesn't and you're not attracted to him, Here's the deal. you don't go. Drew, yeah, could you imagine? Hold on a yeah. second. Could you imagine? And I know you're a passionate, passionate, passionate man. But could you imagine if you were in some bizarre period of, You've decided not to date. Right. And some hot chick you were really into came up to you at a party and w wanted you to come by or go out and have a drink or something. But you thought, hmm, wow, tough because she's, she's so attractive and so beautiful. But it's too bad. I've, I'm in a no dating period. I'll right. have to pass on that. It's like they have these, these blood commitments to themselves. These blood yeah. bonds. Yeah. I made a commitment to myself not to do that anymore. But you know where that letter comes from? Catherine undoubtedly went through some heavy ass with men. Dad, husband. Yeah. You want to find out what it was? Mm -hmm. She's got that heavy voice. Oh, yeah. Catherine? Yeah. What happened to you, baby? Um, it was a lot of stuff. It, um, it had to do with the... He committed adultery plenty of times, and he was an alcoholic and drug, a, drug and, addict. And how about your dad? Where's my bourbon? My dad, he was just crazy in the head. <laughs> was he an addict also? Um, no, he, um... He's kind of like the Waco thing, but without the gun. That's the kind of thing he's into. That's worried about the government? Um, no, he's more in the Jesus freak. I mean, it's Oh, is that part? Yeah, he, he's real freaky. Oh, yeah, I was but thinking of more rude. Was he an addict at one time? Um, no, oh. he was a pastor at one time, actually. Why do our pastors uh, so effed up? I don't know. He, um, he cheated on my mom, so... Yeah. I don't know. It's, well, Kevin, you, you, you see the pattern here? Yeah. That doesn't mean all men have to be that way. It means you choose men that do that, or yeah. you attract men that do that, and you go for men that do that. So understandably, you wouldn't trust yourself. That, that's a good instinct. But maybe rather than going for guys you're super attracted to, look for guys that sort of look good on paper. Maybe you're not so attracted. In fact, the ones that you're bored by, those are the ones you should spend a little time with. Yeah. That is like me. No, oh, no, wait no, a minute. No, no. <laughs> I thought that call looked familiar. Uh, Mary Lee? Yeah. You're uh, 14. Yeah. What's up, Toots? Hey, you guys, I love you guys so much. Loving you, baby. I listen to you guys like every night for the next Shagalicious, Adam. <laughs> right back at you, kiddo. Thanks. And um, the man show's great, and Crank Acres rocks the Casbah. Thanks. And wow. um, Dr. G, you don't get enough loving, so uh, I got to say I love you too so much. Thanks, Marley. Okay, well, anyways. So, um, I've had a series of e eating disorders, mm -hmm. um, and I was, like, wondering how, what could have caused them. Like, how, I know that they're bad for me, 
and I do want to stop them, but it's just that I kind of feel an urge to always have to go back to them. Well, you may always have that urge because these, these are chronic conditions oftentimes. Think more in terms of the eating disorder being a... Yeah. It's, it's a separate disease, but I think if you want to sort of conceptualize it, think of it as something that needs ongoing treatment for many, many years. It's something you have to sort of deal with all the time. It's a chronic condition, but it's also a symptom. It's a symptom of stuff that you might be able to deal with, again, if you keep working real hard. So do you have to go to therapy or something? Yeah, it will, it will not stop without treatment. It, it won't? And it has a very high fatality rate associated with it. Real, yeah, well, I went to therapy when I was seven, Yeah. and my therapist was a real biatch. So yeah. I um, kind of stopped for a little bit because I just hated seeing her. And um, so, like, I was wondering, though, like, what could have caused them and stuff. Like, and also, you like... you got to get back. Someone's going to have to work with you for a long time before you figure all of that out. Oh. Okay. And then also I was wondering, um, like, can I, if, if they're um, chronic, do you stay with the same one, like, over the years? or Therapist? Uh, no, 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 I'm talking about eating disorders. Like, no, but chronic, it's they called... Can like, it can manifest into different ones. It's bulimia slash anorexia. Okay, because I've had, like, all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, so, there. All right, Marley, take care of yourself. Thank Good you. Good times, that. baby. Right. Loving you. You know, I, I was just uh, thinking about... I was uh, spending a little time with my nephews today. Mm. And, uh... No wonder you were irritable when you got here. No, I love those little buggers. You didn't do anything to them, did you? I launched him into the pool about a thousand times. <laughs> so I'm, I'm the only one in my family that's, uh, you think I'm dead, you ought to check out my family. And barely get out of the car. So the kids jump on me because they, they everyone else is Your a beanbag. Yeah. yeah, I actually move. I get them in headlocks, spin them around, I yeah. wrestle those kids down. You know, I'm not worried about my back or anything right. like that. I was launching them into the pool. <laughs> the thing I forgot about kids is how... Um, socially uncomfortable can be with kids because uh, they say what's on their mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it can be a little rough when you're sitting there and they're asking uh, someone why they're so fat. <laughs> you know, and you're sort of sitting next to them. Part of you wants to sit back and enjoy it. The other part wants you to pi wants to pipe up. But then you just think, oh, what the... Jesus, this is horrible. So... My, uh, my great, you know, they're obsessed with my grandmother. Really? And, and, you know, so it's the first thing. It's like, first thing uh, out of... Uh, out of the four-year-old's mouth is, uh, you look older. <laughs> now, meanwhile, he sees her four days ago. This is his great-grandmother, mind you. It is his great-grandmother. Yeah. But he literally saw her less than a week before this. Mm -hmm. You look a lot older, is what comes out. And I'm like, oh, great. Now, yeah, she's got a good sense of humor. But when I'm packing her into the car, and this is what you have to do with old people. Mm -hmm. I mean... It's really, it's like, it's like, it's, it's on the difficulty scale, same as, I'd say, transporting a horse mm -hmm. somewhere. You got, you got to hook up the rig, you got to, you got to get the thing into the back of the rig. You know, I got to go to my grandmom's house half hour early, kind of, yeah. I got to go get her, yeah, yeah. you know, get her onto the thing, get oh. her into the walker, get on the wheelchair, you know, make it, and, and. Old people are weird with uh, forgetting stuff, you know. It, it, not that they do forget stuff, but they, they spaz about it. Yours my purse. Do you have my purse? It's like, listen, you got half a Kleenex and a key from a Peugeot that you sold 22 years ago in that goddamn purse. Stop yelling about the purse. But where's the purse? You know, the purse, I got the purse. The purse is here. It's like four or five purse discussions before you get to the car. Then you get to the car. Where's the purse? <laughs> Like, don't worry. I burnt it. I sold it. I, 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 you know what? While you were going to the car, I took the purse to Mexico, and I sold it for some weed. The purse is in my hand, same place where it was eight feet ago, 20 minutes ago, when we were on the stoop over there. Where's the purse? That was a convert. You know, it's weird. It's like you, you kind of, what it is, here's, what's ha here's what happens to me. I know my grandma Celestia is going to be mad, but I, I, don't, I mean this generically when it comes to old people, which is you're done with work. You're, society is done with you. They, no one wants anything from you. So you start obsessing about the purse. <laughs> Do, you know what I mean? Like You've got to have some importance. There's got to be something going on. Yes. You have to create something going on, and when nothing's going on, then it becomes about the purse. Yes, yes. It's, a, it's an interesting thing that people do. They won't, you know, just, uh, I, I, my thing was just like, screw the purse, I'm cramping on myself, just carry me to the car. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be like. But it, so it's like, get in the car, get out of the car. So I, I load her up in the car, and uh, my uh, little nephews come by, and the four-year-old says, uh, as she gets in the car, doors open, he's saying bye. 
You know, you got to force the kids always. Say bye. Say bye to grandma. You're getting used hey, to that part, huh? Say bye to grandma. You're yelling at the kids. Sister, hit him in the back of the head. Go, say bye to grandma. He goes over there and he goes, when are you going to die? <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I understand Me meaning, it. Meaning he was trying to prepare himself or he was looking forward to it? You know, uh, yeah, he was looking forward but to it. But you know it. what I mean? How did he say he, it? He had a... He had a bottle of a uh, yoo chili for uh, the day she kicked off no it was just he's you know kids are curious about everything yeah. and if you show if you show up and you're missing a leg they want to know where your leg is yeah, and they absolutely. want to know what happened and they want to know who's got it now yeah, and all these crazy inappropriate questions really the questions you want to ask as an adult i mean you meet a guy who's missing a leg you're thinking, what happened to like? 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 What happened? To like? And here's what comes out. You see Austin Powers? <laughs> and then while you're talking about Austin Powers, you think, what happened to your like? What happened to your like? Yeah. What happened to your like? This is why I'd like to just get a three year old and bring him around with me. Let's find out what happened to that like. Timmy, come here. The kid could run interference. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's take ourselves uh, a little break. Uh, Dexter and Noodles, both here from the offspring. Uh, Jesse's here. Jesse, uh, speaking of the leg, is uh, in a wheelchair and is part of a Life Rolls On project. And it's a whole bunch of stuff the Offspring's involved with. And uh, we'll clear it up when we come back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. <clears throat> Dexter, sorry, it's not here. Noodles is here from the uh, Offspring. Jesse Belauer, yeah, yeah, pretty good, is uh, here. He is uh, quadriplegic, although seems to use his hands pretty well. What <laughs> plegic would you would you call him, Drew? C five, C six, man. C six. What's that mean? He sunk his uh, battleship, or <laughs> what does that got mean? Some shoulder gone. Oh, some shoulder gone. Got C six means. So it's different, but but technically not quad, or or is it quad with well, hand movement, or how any, do they any, do any it? Any cervical transaction is quad. It's just that he's got some some, yeah. some motor thinking, activities. Any, any cervical transection, yeah. We lost uh, Anderson. Lost yep. You got is the mic on there, yeah. Anderson? Anderson's looks confused, which. Uh, he actually usually looks confused. So There's no cable attached reading. to his mic, Anderson. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, and write that down when uh, Anderson tries to sue us for wrongful termination. That'll be Exhibit A. I had a crisis actually. Yeah, he had a. Uh, and you gotta you gotta give Anderson some some slack. He had a cup. He's a real tough couple of weeks off. No, he so, went yeah. and worked at a cancer. Oh, no, he did. All right, the cancer camp. All right, all yeah. right. So he's doing the is Lord's this, work. Is this thing on? There you are. Yes, you there you go. All right. right. Now, now, Noodles, why don't you explain uh, why you're here and uh, what uh, the offspring has to do with uh, Life Rolls On? Um, well, a friend of mine uh, named John, his wife, he and his, his wife Stacy has uh, Parkinson's disease, and we had been trying to figure out something we could do, maybe donating something that they could uh, auction off on the Internet or something to, to raise money for, for stem cell research and, and uh, just raise some funds to get some work done. And uh, they got hooked up with uh, Jesse's organization as well as They Will Surf Again. And um, all these things are, are raising money to do stem cell, aggressive stem cell research and figure out about uh, spinal cord injuries and, and uh, nerve. You know, you can probably explain this more than I can. How, how's the climate for works? stem cell nowadays? I mean, I, I know, like, back in the day... I know the Republicans aren't so crazy about the stem cell. I think they're trying to find a way to loophole it from a, you know, from a sort of moralistic standpoint, to let it happen. Right. I mean, well, so aren't I, they able to now to, uh, to raise stem cells outside of, right. you know, raising they, fetuses? It's, and it's like they're <laughs> slowly moving forward with it, like, right. step by step. And also, they've made some uh, strides with uh, cord blood, umbilical cord blood. Mm -hmm. My wife and I just had a baby uh, two months ago, three months ago, and um, we donated our cord blood. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, the cord, it's the blood that's inside the cord? Yeah, inside the umbilical cord, yeah. And what's that? What do you do with that blood? Um, I, I, the stuff that I've seen is they've been able to use it to help, like, kids with sickle cell anemia and different diseases as they grow Just, older. Aren't you supposed to save something for your for kid? For yourself. 
How's that work? Yeah, you're outside of my field. We can talk about this stuff, but that's what I think. Some of it is people will save their own as a sort of a what's called a hematopoietic stem cells. See, my you know. my mom for years had a hang yeah, from the rear. <laughs> oh no, she had a hang from the rear view of her uh, square back. Your your uh, umbilical cord. Yeah. yeah, that must have been a nice. Well, they they yeah, you know, my ancestors used to make exactly. soup with that stuff, but <laughs> I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, Jesse was, uh, now you had your injury how long ago? About six years ago, March 25th, 1996. And that was surfing? That was. And, and uh, this organization is about, or part of it is about getting people who have had injuries back on their surfboards. Is that part of it? Basically, yeah. Just basically bring awareness for spinal cord injuries. And just to let them know that they, you know, life rolls on. They can do whatever they want to do. And my life before I got hurt was surfing, and now I want to go back surfing. And I've been doing that. And it would be nice if other people got hurt, they can get back out there by watching me or learning things that I do. But to be fair, you probably got more done after you got in the wheelchair and stopped surfing than you did when you were surfing, right? I mean, because <laughs> I mean, when you surf, you just smoke weed and surf all day. You can't hold down a job. You can't do anything on a computer. Whenever, whenever there's waves, that's true. It's like all else just gets pushed to the side. Every sides. guy we're construction with wouldn't show. You knew where everyone was because the surf was up <laughs> right. and no one would show up. Or these guys would go out and surf. We had to w work at 7 a.m. They would go out and surf before Five. work, which is like an insanity. But uh, I swear, to, am, I, am I right that you've gotten more done in the last few years since your injury? Most definitely. I mean, I, I definitely was not going to go to college. I was going to do a professional surf career. But now, after I got hurt, I, I graduated from San Diego State University, started a clothing company and a foundation and events, golf tournament, concert and surfing events and i definitely would not have done any of that yeah you'd be living at your folks <laughs> house smoking weed i'd be living anywhere but, but you still your surf car. too you still do oh yeah I too. and i still surf now now how do you yeah. how do you surf without the use of your legs well al merrick made me a board and it was about 10 foot long and we just put these foot straps by the rail where my elbows go and i just lay down flat on the board and then prop myself up so my elbows don't slide off the board and I'm not strapped to the board at all. I wow. Just, I just lie down, and Rob Machado pushes me into waves, and then I just ride by myself and do turns, and someone's behind me if I fall off, but, you know, I can hold my breath a long time and swim. And I, Well, can you? Now, on. what if you fall off? How do you swim? I, my, my wetsuit hold makes me float really well, but... Do you I, fart in it? Um, like an air pocket? I don't think I've done that yet. <laughs> just to stay not warm. That I know just, of. just to keep warm. Oh, just stay warm. Well, pee That's in pee. It. Yeah, pee in it, too. Yeah, yeah right. well... All right, this is uh, an amazing story. And, and look, man, I can barely, I can barely get off my sofa. <laughs> if I can't, can't find a remote for something, I'm pissed. You know, I called uh, Pink Dot to send a guy over to find my, to bring my remote over to me. Well, they have some really Two good uh, ago. surfing yeah. video games you might want to look into. Yeah, even that seems yeah. ambitious for me. <laughs> Don't you burn a lot of calories doing, like, mental calories through? Or what about the thumb work? Any calories for you is tough, I know, Adam. Uh, all right, let's talk to uh, Ryan, who's... Uh, 12. Yeah. Ryan? What's up? Hey, um, I have a question for, uh, uh, the guy from the offspring. Yeah, hey, Ryan, how's That's it going? That's Noodles. Hey, um, hey, Noodles. Hey, um, I just want to know when you guys got some, uh, stuff coming out from your new album. When's that coming out? Um, we're hoping to have some stuff, uh, the beginning of, uh, 03, 2003, um, around February, hopefully, February, March. Right. We're going to go in the studio. Um, we take off for Europe and Japan um, in the middle of uh, August, and uh, when we come back, we're hoping to get in the studio. All right. Well, hey, um, Adam, I love Crank Anchors. That's a great show. Thank Whatever. you. Whatever. Thank you. It is. And um, I hope that thing goes Miss well. Miss Anderson, with, dick. With what? I hope everything goes well with your foundation jesse uh, thank you thank all right. you thank you all right take care thanks, thanks ryan. ryan all right bye all right that's one of the good ones cool good yeah, <laughs> yeah. let me uh let me give that uh foundation uh website out and uh jesse or noodles you want uh, correct me if i screw something up so www.liferolls.com and uh the rolls is r-o-l-l-s uh dot org yeah life correct? rolls on dot org but these events also were helped out by they will surf again dot com and th they're helping out with the golf tournament. They're helping out with the concert and the surf expression session. The concert is when? Uh, this Wednesday, that's right. the 31st. That's already sold out, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah figures uh, that's at the uh, House of Blues uh, uh, offspring. I, 
you know, probably shouldn't even plug that because if it's sold out, it's sold out. But uh, what, what can people do if they want to check out the website and they want to do something? Let's say they're out of the city. They're somewhere that doesn't even have a beach. Yeah, well, basically, if they go to my website, there's a lot of information about all the events that I do. And there's a donation form on the bottom that they can fill out. They could sign the guest book. They can email me. You know, if they have any questions, if they're surfers and they want to get back in the water and they're paralyzed, they can contact let me. Let me, let me I'm, I'm not sure I'm clear. It's, it's life rolls on, one word, no spaces, yeah. dot org. Yeah. And is it, are you encouraging all people with spinal cord injuries, particularly young people, to sort of create a community to sort of share and to support one another? Yeah. Or is it really just surfers you want? No. I'm, well, well, he doesn't I, want any vowels. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you're saying. No, no, no yeah. bikers, that's no. for goddamn sure. You know, life locals, on. locals I mean, only. No bikers I mean, have no spinal cord injuries. No bikers, no fouls, <laughs> locals only. Understand? You know what I'm saying? I mean, because it seems like we have we have quite a diverse listener group, and you probably get a lot of different people if you were talking just to people with spinal injuries of various types. I mean, I imagine you want to talk to paraplegic, quadriplegics. Yeah, and I'm not talking about strictly surfers. I'm talking about anyone who's got injured that wants to get back to doing what they love. And this, and, it, and and the idea is. You're supporting research on stem cell st interventions, and but are you, uh, is there also a community there where people can get support from one another and sort of share information and that kind of thing? I think it's basically from myself when people email me and they tell me, you know, that reading my website or my story and seeing that, okay. you know, I've been doing a lot of things. You know, I water ski, jet ski, skydive. So it's inspiration. For I those do a lot. Yeah, to and, share. Okay, and so they know that. It's possible. Got now, it. you don't just, when you go out and, and give your talks, you don't, you're not just doing it on the coast usually, are you? Have you gone to, like, Phoenix or Well, Des that's what I'm Iowa? doing right now. Like, I do motivational speaking. I'm going to youth groups that and juvenile places that they've never even surfed. You know, these are just kid, troubled kids that mm -hmm. I'm talking to and showing that, you know, like, if you get hurt, it's the life's not over. You just there's different <coughs> things that you can go out there and do. You know what you ought to do? <laughs> now, this sounds a little disingenuous, but believe me, I know how to work a crowd. <laughs> when you're working a troubled group of surfers, you say, you know. <laughs> a troubled whack, group of surfers. Hear me out, Drew. Whack my head on a sandy bottom. But when you go to, like, Phoenix, you go, I, you know, I was motocross riding. Yeah. I hit a cactus. I wasn't sure. wearing my helmet. Yeah. And when you, when you go into the barrio, it's like, I got shot because I was gangbanging. Now I'm paralyzed. Whatever it is, wherever you are, Adjust your story. that's how yeah. you were paralyzed. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Because so the inner city kids, they don't know from surfing. They're not going to identify with that. But you say, hey, I thought I was cool. I thought I was cool running with a gang. Then I got shot. Now look at me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, think about it. Don't answer yet. Right. It's, the good, only, the only it's a good idea. It's a good that, idea. That we want the surfers to still be able to go out and surf. We want the, the motocross guys to still be out and so be able to go out and we just, What about riding. the gangbangers? Well, do we want the gangbangers <laughs> to still go out and gangbang? We can That's uh, what I'm saying. Uh, we can have uh, Jesse with an automatic line. weapon. It'd be great. Uh, <laughs> we want the gangbangers to pick up surfing it's and It's all just about positiveness and being happy with your life and love and life and the people around you. I'm just saying, I've spoken in front of Drew, tell them I've spoken in front of people before. I know how to handle yeah, crap. Yeah, three or four. But uh, I want to get, we have to go to break, but it's interesting you brought up the point about other people being so important, because that's something I like to emphasize. We'll get back to that uh, after the break. All right. Uh, Jesse's here, and uh, Noodle's both here from, uh, well, actually, uh, Jesse's from uh, Life Rolls On, and uh, Noodle's, of course, from The Offspring. We'll take ourselves a quick break, and we'll be back after this. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Noodles is here from The Offspring. Yeah, but man, rock stars. Drew, do you remember seeing The Offspring at the acoustic whatever? I remember, 19 whatever? The, I remember the S being scared out of me that the, the uh, balcony was going to collapse. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep, that I had was family on the balcony, and they, they told me the same thing. They were afraid that it was going to yeah. come down. That was at the shrine, was it? was it because not? of the midgets. We brought midgets out in, in uh, leather and whips and chains. It was red. Yeah, well, we saw the, well, we've probably seen the offspring a bunch of times, but one time uh, we saw them at the shrine auditorium, and, uh, you know, the place was built in the teens or the 20s. Probably not retrofitted. <laughs> and uh, Offspring was rocking pretty good. And th this place was built to have the nutcracker, not, <laughs> yeah, the, not the Offspring. Well, it wasn't until, you know, I mean, everything was mellow until we brought out Vanilla Ice that night. And then that's when the crowd really started, started and there's, uh, there's, jumping there's, up and down. There were like 1,500 kids on the upper deck. Jumping and, up and uh, down simultaneously. You know, most kids are morbidly obese these days, so they're all going about 250. <laughs> and they're jumping up and down to oh, the uh, rocking the stylings of the offspring. Oh, and the whole, the whole balcony's shaking, and I'm thinking, uh, well, this is how I'm going to go. <laughs> 
going to get crushed uh, by a bunch of fat teens at an <laughs> offspring concert. But uh, as it turns out, it held up. And uh, But, Drew, that's burned. That's burned in your mind, right? Yes. Like, for your parents, maybe it's... Uh, Europe in ruins and uh, yes. Germany burning for and me it's uh, the, night of the, the Blitzkrieg <laughs> and all that stuff. For you, it's the offspring, offspring yeah. concert, yeah. right? Absolutely. Jesse's uh, here from uh, Life Rolls On, and the uh, the website is uh, www.liferollson.org. And uh, he is uh, a uh, surfer who was uh, got into an accident, was it six years ago? Yeah. And uh, became a uh, quadriplegic, but has now sort of uh, worked his way... Uh, back into the uh, paraplegic realm and uh anyway if you're if you've know anyone who's had this problem if you have it yourself check out that uh, website and let's talk to uh, eric who's 19 eric hey what's up man hey yeah i got a question about taking sleeping pills and what's actually the act, like side effects or is there any problems with taking them what kind uh i don't know i got them from gmc and there's some kind of pills that you chew and you let like evaporate in your mouth or something yeah. Anything that you can buy sucks. I mean, anything that a doctor doesn't <laughs> give you sucks. Always remember that, son. Actually, I take pain medicine right now, and I, I'm, it really doesn't make me like, get tired. I don't really feel it. What are you taking? I don't know. It's a long name that doesn't sound too powerful. It's not like Percocets or anything, but... Uh, I take that. And Wind I also Patrol. Take some pills. No, he I, bought it at what? GNC, the General Nutrition Center. Yeah, yeah. So it's like some herbal thing. Yeah, it's good herbal or. Herbal you bought an herbal stuff. pain reliever? No, I got the, the pain medicine from my doctor because I just broke my back. You broke your back. Did you yep. have a spinal cord injury? Uh, no, I actually didn't. I just broke my L2 vertebrae. So you've got a vertebral fracture. Now, what is the pain pill? Go ahead and um, tell us. Find out what it is. I do not know the name of the Vicodin, pain. codeine, I'll be lying if Lortab. I don't well, can, you, can you find out what it is? It's not right now. I'm at work, but it's actually a long name. It's like a pill I've never even heard of. It's like hydrocodone. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's just Vicodin. Oh, okay. how much is that are you using? Uh, they just tell me to take two pills every four hours. Are you taking that much? Um, no, because when I take it, it makes me depressed, and right. I really can't like. I don't get tired. I don't like get tired at all. Well, uh, shouldn't you wash down with booze if it gets you no, depressed? That's, that's why I started doing. Like four o'clock at night, I started taking like shots and stuff because I couldn't go to sleep. Right. Well, that's you, where you the need, pain pills. I mean, uh, sleeping pills came in. Right, Eric, you, you need to call your doctor and get this all straightened out because uh, maybe you're using too much pain medication. Maybe you need better pain management. This something something's not right here. And yeah, sleeping pills, real sleeping pills, are very dangerous. You can oh, get, they you, really? you can get hooked in a in ten days or so pretty easily. Jeez. Now, yeah, what do you do with? Uh, Hey, uh, Eric, you're 19, becoming like uh, Elvis in his last <laughs> days over there. What, what do, what's the danger of the real sleeping pills? As, as you know, Drew, I enjoy those. I know you do. But then uh, I think about it, well, you take it at night. I mean, when he, uh, just, do people it, it abuse will, them during the day, or how does it? How does it, it the will, real it, abuse start? Real abuse will be they start doubling down at night because it starts. In, it starts doesn't to, work. It does, starts not working. It starts elevating anxiety levels during the day. And even though you take more, anxiety gets even more intense. So you uh -huh. take more, anxiety gets more intense, sleeplessness gets more difficult, take more, take more. And then they start yeah. having panic during the day, and they start taking them during the day, too. Boy, they take those sleeping pills. Yeah. Well, See, it's that's just the because they're they detoxing me. during the day, and so they take it to try to suppress the withdrawal. Not yeah. to go to sleep, just suppress the withdrawal. I know you, uh, society, sort of, uh, sort of shuns those people. I have a certain respect for those people that, like, like I tell you, like, yeah, every time before I, I stepped out on stage to do an hour and a half comedy routine, I'd get loaded out of my mind. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing, dude. Right. That's off to you. I, I would take a Quaalude and a fifth of Jack Daniels and go out and play the whole concert. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. Like, how do you do it? Especially, like, you know, these comics always talking about how they would get loaded and go out on stage and perform for an hour and a half, and you're doing materials? You don't even have an instrument on you. How, right. do, you, how do you pull that off high as a kite? I smoke half a joint. I can't get my car out of the garage. I'm, like, from freaked <laughs> out. You know, All of a sudden, I've forgotten how to drive a stick. It's a mess. I think there's a cop in the garage with me. You, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And we've got to go to break again here. It's going quickly tonight. But uh, yeah. I, you've always asked a million questions about what it's like to be a quad, how, you know, how you're bowel and bladder and mm. sexual function and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I know you've got a million questions for Jesse. So I know. But Adam, Drew, Adam, can I truly oh, have... I can't wait. But hold on. <laughs> How can I have a million questions for someone and not think of those? For you to tell me I have a million questions you I, nullifies I, my questions, doesn't it? I'll ask him for you. Woo. It's interesting to ponder that, isn't it? <laughs> I know what's going on in your head. I see the thought bubble over your mind. All right.
we'll uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. Uh, Jesse is here. Uh, he will. Uh, he is. Uh, I don't look at him as a quad though, but it's sort of. Uh, but he, he's, he's always, always had a, movement there. You've always had a. Always uh, had a lot of questions yeah. for the quads. Yeah. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> and uh, also uh, noodles here from the offspring have a lot of questions about uh, offspring. Drew will tell me what they are <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Levine, fast grown LO Radio North America. I'll tell you what, we got a few deaths in my flamethrower over here, boy. I'll tell you what, I'm about ready to drop cry right out of all of them. I tell you what, we were talking about, but uh, I'd have to kill you. Oh, 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 oh. Dr. Drew over there is hot, 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 but I'll tell you what, right now. Offspring, oh, I'm working with this show, but it's about to rock of the house. But, oh, oh. You had a moment there, didn't you? Yeah, I was doing some radio. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while, we attempt to do uh, radio, but uh, now it's back to us. Drew and I fighting on the air. <laughs> Me talking about high school. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> That's be, right. Be fair. High school and your grandma. And my grandma. Right. Phone number here for uh, Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Noodles is uh, here from The Offspring and uh, Jesse Belauer. Huh? Bill Lauer right there, Jesse yeah. Bill Lauer. Life Rolls On is uh, his organization at uh, www.liferollson.org. And uh, he was a, was a surfer and is a surfer, paralyzed uh, six years ago, and is basically uh, doing something about it. Offspring has uh, gotten together with uh, that organization, is raising money and awareness. With theywillsurfagain.com. Another right. organization. Another raising, organization. Raising stem cell, money for stem cell research. Right. right. All right. And, uh... Well, you were going to ask him about his sexual functioning. Like that's that. right. I'm going to tell yeah. you what questions to ask. That's Drew right. was going to ask uh, me to ask you uh, some questions. So now, Woo. what about sexual function? Well, if you're quadriplegic or even paraplegic. What about paraplegic? Is there a difference between... Is there a difference? But, but What's the difference? Not everybody has all the same functions retained. Mm -hmm. All right. So, how's that going? And what about stuff like Viagra and stuff like that? Well, Any difference? Um, Viagra is a great invention. Viagra is his friend. <laughs> really? So, the big difference with the Viagra, yes. right? Very big difference. Um, I don't get to use it as much as I would like to. Well, Who does? Because <laughs> well, it's not I'm getting laid. I'm get sponsored by the thing, you know. It's kind of too expensive. <laughs> How much is the Viagra, Drew? I samples in my office. You want to stop <laughs> by? <laughs> Here's my address. Just bring those in. I'll get them to Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah, they'll make it out of your He's going to pop pills. Yeah, I'll, like, mm, I'll go down to the pier and throw it at him. The, the, the bong, the cocaine <laughs> tray, and the Viagra in a dish. Well, what, what, what about... Oh, my God. I just thought... Forget about sex. What about beating off? That's that's my real mistress. No? None of that? No. None of that. Oh. Oh, Adam. It's crazy. I don't even really feel from the chest down. Wait, nothing from the chest down. From, so From the nipples down. If I was to give you like a hot foot or something, nothing? Nothing. Good truth. Mental now. Now, do you, But do you, could ha do you have orgasms still? It's kind of more of the mental thing, kind of a visual thing. It's not, I don't... But you don't really have a climax where you No, to. there's no coming. But is it like, uh, you know when you're getting laid in your dream... And you have an orgasm, but you don't actually ruin your sheath, but it's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Is it the same sort of vibe? Oh, it's yeah, it's a great vibe, definitely. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a never-ending vibe. I mean, I'm a I uh, with Viagra's help. I don't like to talk <laughs> about this, but I took care of a little business tonight after yeah. after you a, talk about a, masturbation, and I'm shocked. <laughs> I know, I know, because my <laughs> sensibilities usually don't allow me to talk about it. They're very delicate, but. I was in the shower. I couldn't get that stuff off me. It was like um, it was like uh, some caulking. <laughs> I got all caught up in my belly hair and stuff. And I was, I was thinking of actually cutting the hairs off. Oh my God. It was a disaster. It was a disaster. Oh my God. I'm the fact, you know what I'm talking about, though. I mean, once in a while, you you brew up a batch that's like uh, crazy glue or something. It just won't come off of you, and it gets all caught up in the hairs. And I was, you know, I had the shampoo down there. I got the shampoo going. I was scrubbing and everything. Lots of hot water. When I was all rinsed off, there it was. Adam, Still you know, there. Women love this talk. They really do. I'm I, just I, saying that, I showed that some ladies, not getting that wouldn't be such a bad deal. I showed That's some ladies the, the cinematic triumph that you and I uh, participated in, and they were like, oh, my God. 
They oh. couldn't deal. Oh, the yeah. Drew was talking about a little man show bit. Well, that, uh, Adam, no, Adam please. Don't, don't, masturbation. don't spoil it for the <laughs> kids. Well, but, uh, people were shocked. By but that. I'm saying if you can have that sort of smokeless cigarette for a penis, I mean, if you got a, if you got a penis where you get the sensation of an orgasm, yet you don't have to spend hours in the shower with a with a uh, wire brush, as it turns out, uh, actually to break out, to get this stuff out in a, in a mustache comb, it's, you know, more power to you. That, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to make something good out of The other thing that people don't I'm recognize, saying. Jesse, you pointed out about not, Jesse not feeling anything below the mid-chest, is the skin can break down. If you don't move constantly, oh, yeah. your skin will break down. Why? You don't want no pressure it, it, it just erodes. It, with the pressure, it prevents blood to that area, and it just it will just break down. It dissolves. Is yeah, this, is, yeah. Is this like when something falls asleep? Is that what it's? Is it telling you to move around? Uh, is that what that is? No, it will hurt if you if you you're, you'll have pain. That's why yeah. you move all night during your sleep. You can't lie in a. I have more to turn every minute. couple hours. You know, every. I don't want to get any pressure sores because then you'll have to be lying on your stomach sometimes months. You never know, and you won't be able to do anything. And those sores, and they need surgery. And you can, you can. I've had people erode from their yeah, like their by buttock, your bones. from their buttock into the bone, into, bones. into the rectum. It can roll right into the, I'll you know. Tell you, it would wreck a guy to do, have that. Now, you've got a great oh. guy that accompanies you around, helps you out and stuff. Yeah, I have a great guy. You know, this guy's been with me. He's, this guy's sunny. He's been an amazing person, helping me out for the last, like, four years, 24 hours, seven days a week, doing everything that I can. It's just, I mean, it's shocking that before I didn't even know, like, you know, one, two stairs is, like, an impossible thing for me to get up without any help. You know, I see people just running up, not even thinking about different things, and I got to think about little cracks on the street. I mean... It's cr it's an amazing thing. And he's with you all the time, helps you? All the time. All right. Drew nice. was, uh, I just gave my uh, baby Ruth bar, I think, right? So, yeah. That's right. Sonny. All right. Good guy, that Sonny. Good people. Oh, yeah. Good Sonny. good, good brother. Good brother. Sonny, I, I think I got a number two coming up, so I need a little help getting off the pot. I mean, that... <laughs> <laughs> Not that I couldn't do it myself, but hey, come on, let's be. That's what you do. So I, gave you the, the push I gave two? you the baby Ruth bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, that's kind of a lot. Give me the money. baby. You want another one? You help me off the toilet after the next break. Oh, uh, well, we got to think about that for you, Adam. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that'd be great. Oh. Well, you know how it is. You got a wire brush. But where do you put your hands? You plant them onto the seat or you grab the towel bar. That's not strong. I'd like a guy stay in front of me and give me a little help up. <laughs> Sonny will be right there in flying colors. And wiping your ass for you. Yeah, I mean, why should I do everything? I'm a busy, busy man. <laughs> Anthony? Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. What's up? Hey, Adam and Drew, you guys rock. Great. And uh, Offspring's my favorite band. And I was just wondering, how did uh, you guys get started? Oh, we just... Uh, actually, Dexter and, and Greg and a couple of guys started the band first and... Uh, I think Dexter was just going to play guitar, but the guy who was singing couldn't sing, and I ended up joining uh, another band with Dexter and the drummer at the time, but really what happened is they, they wanted to get into a social distortion show at Irvine, uh, at UCI, UC Irvine, and um, uh, I think the cops broke it up and shut it down, and the guys went home and were all ticked off and said, hey, we should uh, just start our own band and, and forget going to see other bands play when we always get beat up by cops or kicked out because we're too young or whatever and that was 1980 that was 84 actually. wow yeah and then i played in another band uh with uh dexter and a couple of different guys um and james who was our drummer at the time and then in 85 i joined what is now the offspring jesus christ coming up on uh, 20 years mm. hey, it's amazing uh, you know it's amazing too uh, it just popped in my head but i see all these uh, behind the musics and stuff that the, these bands like you know the mamas and the papas or something they were like around for two and a half years you know a lot of these you know beatles were like seven years or something i mean a lot of a lot of these that bands is weird. Uh -huh. that is weird it's weird yeah. that a lot of these bands even i don't know Jimi hendrix i mean the, the doors the, the list goes on and on where these like bands are like three years five years you know, we right. talked a lot of bands that are like... Millie Vanilli, how long was that? This, you know. 17 short years. But yeah. yet, yet now is sort of seen as a time when there's a more rapid turnover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. It's, right. Like, it's, it's almost like the ones that make it stay for a long time. Yeah. And the, 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 the minute... The well, ones and you're lucky if you get to be, you know, have the longevity, longevity of a band like U2 or, you know, R.E.M. or the Foo Fighters are doing well, you great guys from too, Nirvana. I mean. so. yeah. yeah, yeah, we've done all right, man. No complaints. Uh, wrote bad religion. A Anthony? Yeah? Yeah. Anthony, thanks, buddy. I was wondering if I could ask another question. No. Sure. No. 
No. Neil what, says what's yes. We're recording. playing good cop, bad cop over here. <laughs> Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. What was your inspiration for the song Change the World? Oh, I'm glad we had a minister. Um, just uh, running into people that, that uh, gave a lot of lip service to doing things to, to make the world a better place, but didn't really do anything. Just guys who like to sit around and argue, but then really, you know, if it came in, in between them and enjoyment of their life, they didn't do anything about it. Everyone knows someone like that. Yeah. Anthony? Yeah. All right. All right. Good times there, buddy. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Anthony. Uh, let's talk to uh, Christine. Christine? Hello? You're uh, 16? Yeah. You there? What's up? Nothing. What's up, Jesse? It's Christina. Yo, what up? I told you I was going to call. <laughs> yeah. So, how's it going? Chilling like a villain here. All you, right. You tell us how's it going, Christine. All right. What's up, guys? We doing all right on the, on the air here? Yeah, I listen to you guys all the time. You guys are pretty cool. A whole lot of things. She's yeah. one of the volunteers. Uh, she uh, works on the website? Oh. Yeah. There you are. Christine? Yeah. That's better. <laughs> Was I losing you there first? What, what do you do on the website, Christine? I, don't, I volunteer at his events. I volunteered at the Abilities Expo, and um, I'm volunteering at the golf tournament tomorrow for him. And uh, we, you just like on the ninth green handing out uh, Miller Lights, or what are you doing? I don't know what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> we we haven't mentioned, you guys haven't mentioned the golf tournament yet, I don't think. What talk? about the golf tournament? <laughs> well, basically, this is going to be the fourth annual um, Life Rolls On golf tournament, and they will surf again. Basically, it's at the Malibu Country Club. It's all helped awareness um, and for spinal cord research, and it's going to be tomorrow. Who are some of the people golfing in the, in the thing? Well... We got pro surfers, Rob Machado, Kelly Slater. We got Jose Canseco. We got some other... We actually got actually these playmates that were... We have a live auction, and um, we're auctioning off three playmate dates with them. So are Girl. they going to be, like, intense at different holes? Remember, like, that one golf course that just got busted? Where right. Had, uh, these yeah. these tents the, all around the golf course? There's a little tent house to spring up. <laughs> Yeah, Always the playmates is. will be manning those tents. They just busted some uh, golf course out here for uh, having uh, prostitutes, like, uh, hanging out. In, in tents on the greens. So oh it's like you could play 18 holes and right. it had a whole different meaning, Oh, I my think. God. Yeah, get a little, uh, have a little happy ending. <laughs> you could still make par, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Christine? Yeah. Thanks for calling, baby. No Good Thank times, you. huh? Bye. Bye. All right. All right, let's uh, see here. Let's talk to uh, Chris, who's 16. Chris? Yeah. What's Oof. going on? I, um... 16. When I was, like, eight years old... Not a virgin. My mom abused me a lot and mm -hmm. called me worthless and all that bullshit. And oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. I had to put him on hold because he uh, used the S word, but, oh, man. It's amazing. It always, it always scares me when you hear 16-year-old guys are, like, angry and sort of... I was going to say you're picturing these guys five years down the road, but nah, let's picture call it now. five weeks. Yeah, picture them now. Let's say Monday. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, this is why I really, this is why I really hate these uh, abusive parents, is because they create people that uh, go out and abuse you, essentially. Drew, you got something there? No. Kelly Slater and uh, Rob Machado will uh, be at this event. Drew yeah. has uh, never heard of anybody, so don't don't hand him and something. Kelly Slater. You know, some past chair people of the event were Angie Everhart. Goldie Hawn, Goldie Hawn Kurt, Russell. Kurt Russell, and it's just been a great event, you know, and it's been selling out every year, and we've been getting some great auction items, and we're having an auction. You can come out tomorrow around 4 p.m. to the Malibu Country Club. Um, there's a s silent auction, live auction, a lot of great things. True. I, I heard in, uh, I think it was 2000 or 2001, you actually uh, auctioned off your sense of humor. Over there, who bought that? Now three. I got you. Be now three, now three, getting me home. Who bought that sense of humor? <laughs> right? It's been missing for a long time. I didn't realize yeah. we found it and uh, were able to auction your it. Wife, uh, your, your wife found it in the attic, I think, of the oh, house and uh, brought it on. I looked, uh, there, there. I looked there a bunch of times. So. Yeah, she told me not to tell you, but I oh, thought it was God damn high it. time you found out what happened to your sense we're of actually, humor. Yeah. Off, we're actually raffling off a trip to Peru, um, and it was donated by Quicksilver. And we're going to, you know, you can log on to my website and fill out some raffle tickets and buy some raffle tickets to win a trip down to Peru. Speaking of Peru, I know it's a, uh, it's a muggy, tropical climate over there. Is it not? I don't think of it's it that Peru. Way. I think of Peru as hot. 
I think it proves that people go to go skiing in the summertime up here. Yeah, but but it's down, silly. but don't they don't they go don't they go to uh, look must at be, the, yeah. like uh, temples and uh, things like there, that there in Peru? Be, yeah, Machu Machu yeah. Picchu and stuff. That's in Peru. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's about, okay. uh, about what's going on? Okay, Peru. Would you I shut up, you idiot? Please. What we Peru? What do you, you think of Greenland? No. There is actually yeah. some, some cold water breaks though, right in Peru? Uh, don't so. talk to Drew anymore. A, you're trying to make a point. Someone find out the uh, average temperature of Peru. <laughs> I can yell at Drew. <laughs> average temperature. Brian? Yeah. You're 29. What's the average temperature of Peru, <laughs> and where is it located? On what parallel? How close to the equator is it? It's south of the equator. It's probably about 80 degrees all the time, you know? Yeah, that's does, what I'm does saying. Does border on Ecuador, though? Doesn't Peru and Ecuador share a border? I have coast? no idea. If man. they do, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, Drew. I'll tell you that. A lot of trouble <laughs> with arguing with me. Because then guess. Chile's further south. Chile's, Chile's way down. Right south of, you know. Chile's, Chile's all the way down, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so does someone go to IHOP and get a get a, a, a placemat, and let's find out where this goddamn Peru is. <laughs> that's right, Brian, wrong. What's that's going on, the only Brian? Here, where's my... Yeah, all right, but here's the point. I'm sweating through the back of my shirt again here. I has, could I get any mug air in here? I see. Anderson, is there any air that you can turn on that's in this, this room? Or did I just have to sit here and sweat through the back of my shirt every goddamn well, night? It's there frozen, goes. Adam. Yeah, it's frozen. Oh, oh, That's right. I heard air your ranting and raving frozen. about that last week. Frozen air. Does, Anderson, does the air conditioning work in this place or not? Or how I does it work? Think it I'm happy. I'm sweating, too. All right. Is it turned on? Is it turned up? I got it turned down to 71, and it's 78 degrees in there. Okay. I'm, I got, I'm got an put extra a dude in there. I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put a uh, temperature. I'm going to put a thermometer in here. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, this question's for Drew. I, I've um, I've got an addiction problem to uh, Vicodin, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to stop taking it, but every time I try to stop taking it, I end up taking it again because I go through really bad withdrawals. Right. You need to go to a hospital that's used to dealing with those withdrawals and get you through that. And you need to be treated for your Vicodin addiction because even once you get through the withdrawal, I guarantee you, you will use again. You'll have headaches and back pain, and you'll feel like really miserable depression. You feel like you lost someone, you, you know, like somebody died. That's the feeling you walk around with. And you'll know that you can have a few minutes of relief if you just took one of those Vicodin, and you will take one, and you'll take a lot more. That you require, do that? requires treatment, Brian. This, you live in North Ridge. There's treatment all over the place. You know, get, get yourself into some treatment. Yeah, because, I mean, I've, I've stopped taking it before. You know, there's been long periods of time. Of where course. I as, it. as with any drug, people yeah. know that they can control it early on, but it gets more and more difficult to control, and you always go back without treatment. Is there any way to do like uh, something without going into a hospital? Or? Not, I, I just don't. Uh, people can try, and somebody might be able to get you successfully off. I have never successfully detoxed if I could in outside a hospital. Well, but that's you, Drew. Someone that's with skills could probably pull that's it off. Possibly true. Hey, Brian. Yeah. I'm gonna go uh, give myself a swirl if I put my head in the toilet to try to cool my brow. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to use Jesse's helper to get my head out of the toilet after I'm done, all right? <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right, that's enough out of you. All right, Brian, hold on. I'll talk to you. I'm second. overheating. I mean, we got to right. take a break. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Noodles is here from The Offspring. Jesse Bill Hour. I bobbled just a little bit is uh, here. He's from uh, Life Rolls On. He is uh, eh, sort of quadriplegic, but uh, <laughs> quadriplegic light. This kid uh, has got some, uh, he's more mobile than uh, most of us who uh, aren't uh, confined to a wheelchair. <laughs> and he's got a pretty cool wheelchair. Yeah, straight, and, and you know, guy chromed that... out with red TriStar rims. Got a rolling style with a smooth profile, Helps right? Helps him on and off the toilet, Adam. <laughs> Helps him on and off the toilet, right? Yeah. I mean, you're jealous. I know. Yeah. I got a guy that does it all. What I can't do, he does. If I need to walk upstairs, he walks upstairs for me. Yeah. And carries me at the same time. That's what I need. Adam and I are like, yeah. <laughs> I need a Sherpa to get where, me up Where in the yellow pages do you find those guys? Can you I know? get a glass of water, Sonny? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's right there. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, uh, I really could use that. True, would you like to be that for me? No. Okay. All, all right. He's a good job. cook, too. www.liferollson.com dot org as well the, as uh, uh, they will surf again dot com. com exactly right 
And uh, these are, if you uh, have been listening to the show and uh, anything has uh, struck you, you can uh, go on to these websites and uh, get plenty of information about these two organizations. All right. Uh, Jesse, I had one more thing to uh, And And um, this coming up weekend, August 1st through the 4th, you can come down to Huntington Beach to the U.S. Open. Come check out the Life Rolls On booth at uh, right there at the south side of the Huntington Beach Pier. And I will be surfing out on August 4th at about 12 noon at uh, my annual expression session brought to you by Life Rolls On, and they will surf again. And I'll be surfing right out there with about 50,000 people, Rob Machado, Kelly Slater, all the top pro surfers in the world. It's going to be a great event, and I'm just looking forward to that. And there's going to be big waves. And if you've ever, I mean, it's going to be impressive watching Jesse surf. It's, it's really going to be a cool thing. I didn't I've know the waves are going to be big. There was a hurricane there's off hurricanes, the next. Yeah, we've had good swell for the last there's, there's week. Like three yeah, hurricanes good. down there. Yeah. Or something. I'll tell you, it's one thing surfers... You know, they're, they're, they drop out of junior college, they, they live at home their whole life, but they become like yeah. meteorologists, yeah. and they seem to f learn the metric system from the weed <laughs> distribution, too. Those are the two things you gotta, <laughs> you got to tip your hand to the surfers on those. They know the metric system, and they know the tides, the swell, the storms are on top of everything. That's just all the Santa Cruz surfers, I think. They've <laughs> got the five-day forecast now. William? Yeah? You're uh, 19? Uh-huh. What's up? Uh, I was calling to see if uh, height or weight has anything to do with penis size because uh, I'm packing a pretty small heat. Yeah, and are um, you a tall guy or a small uh, guy? I'm 5'4", 210. Ooh, it's got some weight on you. That, that is one of the things that can uh, theoretically have some influence on penis size. Uh, a lot of adipose tissue around will create estrogens. What's I adipose love? tissue? Fat. Fat uh, produces estrogen, and estrogen can uh, possibly affect sort of penis size and performance. Well, also, and plus it's just going to make it look smaller, you yeah. know, against all that. There hat. is the turtle factor. Is there yeah. any way to, like, increase height or penis size? Lose height the weight. or penis size? For the height has nothing to do with the penis size, nothing whatsoever. But is there any way that I can increase that? Cause I, uh, Lose the weight. But the height? But, hey, William, listen. How do you think you're going to increase your height? We'll put you on the rack. We'll uh, remove <laughs> remove part of your shin and then uh, graft something onto it or something. Disco yeah. shoes. Disco yeah. shoes. Way to go. And they're making a comeback. They're going to be back, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, like you wear those boots uh, Sly Stallone wore in the late 80s. They have a little heel on them. They zip up on the side. No one knows you're wearing boots, but they give you an extra couple inches. Man, you know that has saying? nothing to do with penis size. You just take care of yourself physically more. Exercise, watch your diet. Yeah, get, get, get going. Five four uh, two ten is a, is a pretty pretty husky cat, right? Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's where the focus has to be. Why? Well, well, I wasn't that heavy, but I started smoking a lot of pop, a lot of pot, and that got me really heavy. All right. Well, much easier. Yeah, much easier. And if you're if you're marijuana addicted, you're gonna have to deal with that too. Yeah. Because that's not gonna stop by itself. All right, so, uh, William, the focus is uh, not on the penis, not on the height, but on weight uh, On the tongue, loss. right? Isn't that on the tongue. The, you know, the wife tells me. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, Jesse, Jesse's I there. was going to actually say that. I didn't know if I wanted to step in and, you know, be a part of that. <laughs> yeah, Jesse's tongue still works fine. Compensate, my brother. Just use something different. I can, I can your imagine. hands, your mouth, just, you know, try new things. How small is his wiener, though? Yeah, that's, uh, well, I don't know if he... Strap know. on. William? Yeah. How small is the penis? Uh, I barely clear four inches. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Anderson just asked that question because he wanted to play that sound effect. That's all. All right, William. All right, tongue good exercises. Time. Good tongue times. exercises is the way to go. And, and listen, if you got a gut and some thigh on you, isn't it like sort of building up three mounds around your penis? I mean, it's like planting a flag and then putting sand dunes <laughs> around it. You can't see it anymore. I, I, I mean, there's something to that. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it's 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 a. I I, I think Noodles was uh, alluding to this, yeah. which is it's sort of relative. It's like saying, is this is this rim big or is this car rim small? It's like, well, what car is it on? And I'll tell you if it's big or small. <laughs> if it's on a SUV, maybe it's small. But if it's on a Hyundai, maybe it's big. You know, I mean, there's got to be an element of that. All right, because I've, whenever you see a fat guy at the gym, you never see a fat guy with a big penis. <laughs> you never do, do you? I'm not really looking. I have to yeah. say, I've really I have a study on that one. But <laughs> I do. I'm, I'm glad somebody has. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Let's talk to uh, Michelle, who's 15. Hey. Michelle? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, first I want to say hi to Noodles. Hi, Michelle. How you doing? I'm good. good. Um, you guys are like my favorite band. Thank you. Thanks. Good. I'm glad. And I'm looking forward to your C CD coming out next year. 
Cool. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam, you are awesome. Yeah. All right, Michelle, what can we do for you tonight? What's up? And, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I was looking into um, birth control. Mm hmm. And I was just wondering if you, like, smoked a lot of cigarettes every day and some weed, if that would, like, be bad. The cigarette smoking and the birth control pill really don't go well together. They're not so much an issue at your age, but as you get in your late 20s, it really can be. So, and, you know, how about getting using that as motivation for stopping the cigarettes, too? I mean, I think you understand how awful that is for you. Yeah, I know. Uh, as far as the pot goes, I don't know of any evidence that occasional pot is going to do anything to the birth control pill, but just about anything can affect its effectiveness. So you got to worry about that a little bit. You on the pill now? No, I'm looking into it. No, oh, okay. All right. I, I think it'd be okay to get on it, maybe use that as motivation to stop the cigarettes, right? Yeah. And if you can't stop the cigarettes, you've got to really question whether or not it's a safe thing to do for you. You got a boyfriend? Yeah. How old is he? 16. Let's put it this way. Pregnancy would be much more dangerous to you than the birth control pill at this age. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. So do something. Okay. All right. All right. Good times, everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Depo shot, I think, it's, for you. It's weird when you're when you're uh, like a 15 year old chick and you're having sex. Y your whole life becomes like a covert operation. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking into. He always like looking over his shoulder. Is that yeah. mom? Man from Watch Uncle. That, man. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It, your whole life is like uh, my mom's. My mom's gonna be out. She'll be back at five. But if we can get out of school in the fifth period, then we can get. Your whole life just becomes like Mission Impossible. It's like one, one big covert operation after the next. It's getting the birth control, scoring with the boyfriend, what bed you're going to do was, it in. I was well into my mid-20s before I started having sex. So I, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah no yeah, way. Good-looking yeah. guy like yeah, you. I'm still a virgin. I find that impossible. <laughs> impossible to believe. And a uh, surfer, a musician, no way. Brian? Yes. You're uh, 21. Yes, I'm calling in reference simply to you and versus Drew's debate about the temperature of, of the water off the coast of Peru. I don't think that's what we were fighting about, was it? I was talking about the ambient temperature. The air temperature. The, the air temperature of Peru. But go ahead, anyway, okay, Brian. I apologize. What do you know about Peru? Oh, uh, yeah, basically Peru is in the southern hemisphere, um, so the South Pacific gyre in the southern hemisphere is rotating counterclockwise bringing up cold water from Antarctica. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the average water temperature is between 50 and 66.2 so degrees. it's cold. So, Jesus Christ. So that would help keep the climate also so, cold. Oh, yeah. Exactly, because what happens is that, obviously, water having a high specific heat uh, tends to obviously reflect what's going on in the air. But where's where's Peru in... Uh, in, in, in proportion to the equator in Ecuador? Yeah, it's well, just the equator. Yeah, the, well, the equator then, it ranges from between about 3 to maybe 17 degrees south of the equator. Mm. How, how far are we? That's we're, like Mexico, We're, we're right? a little more than that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're north of the equator. Yeah, I understand. We're 30 right. degrees north latitude. We're how how many? many? 30. So it's about Mexico. It's about where Mexico uh, uh, below as Mexico is above. To yeah, me, that Mexico sounds like north, a perfect... Equator. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. We're, we're equating how far above as opposed to how far below. Peru is about the same distance below as Mexico is above. <laughs> Uh, actually, yeah. actually, Mexico is a little bit further above okay. than Peru. Yeah. All right. All right. Still, does that answer any question? Does that mean it's a warm climate? Sounds like a good location for winning a trip. <laughs> Sounds like a nice place to be, That's Peru. Right. All right. Where would wow. one win a trip to Peru? Go to www.liferolls.org and fill out some raffle tickets. You might win a trip down there. Well, let me give you a heads up. Bring the parka and mucklocks, right, and Drew? And some wetsuits and booties. <laughs> it's going to be wetsuit. freezing over there. I mean, you get off the plane, your uh, saliva freezes as you uh, step off the plane, Drew. Drew? Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Chris? Yeah. Yeah, you're OU with the S word. Huh? What's up? Um, all right, when I was eight, my stepmom abused me and all that. Um, yeah, I know I shouldn't cuss, dude. That's right. <laughs> Excuse my language. All right. Uh, but uh, then I got, like, really depressed when, while she was doing it. Uh, started thinking about suicide. Was she, was, she, myself three was, she, times. was she physically abusing you? Uh, physically and mentally. Mentally abusing you. She would punch me. She'd smack me with stuff. She threw chairs at me, all that. Wow. And now I'm 16. Uh, all, like, all of it's coming back. I'm feeling depressed again, and I don't know if I am depressed, you know, but... 
Well, I'll just go with like you. It could like be coming back from that, or well, of from, course, uh, having living through that kind of trauma can affect you for a long time. And depression is one of the well, symptoms. I mean, I get that. I'll just wonder if it could be like caused from something else that's happened to me lately, or well, anything that happens to you lately can predispose you or sort of trigger the depression that you are al already at risk to because of that serious trauma you've been through. Oh, okay. You know, this is a, this is serious stuff. You really should ha get some help with this. It's it affects it very much affects the biology of your brain. It, it permanently etches stuff into your head that you, if you want to get help with, yeah, and get like away this, from, like a chair, right? You you actually, actually, actually in your head, your leg. You know, yeah, like if you that. don't duck. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Where's your dad? Um, he lives with me. I live with my dad. I mean. Oh, okay. And she's gone now. Yeah, my stepmom's gone. All right. And uh, what's your dad have to say about this? Uh, my dad didn't believe me at first. Mm. He said I was making stuff up and tr just trying to get her in trouble. And, well, my school made me go see, like, the school counselor. Yeah. And I told her about it, and she called my dad up on, at work and told him about what I was saying. Mm -hmm. And I got yelled at even more by her, and it just got more severe, so. Oh, my God. So, what, does he believe you or not? Huh? How does he feel about it now? I know what the end of the story was. Does he believe you? At this point. Oh, uh, he didn't never believe me until he actually saw it for himself so he actually witnessed it yeah he witnessed uh she took a metal spoon out of boiling water off a pot on the stove and smacked me across the face with it uh-huh oh god well some 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 italians use that to see if the spaghetti's ready huh no okay no. i'm sorry my uh, friends are sitting here yelling. no that's all right buddy listen don't hurt yourself don't hurt anybody else get some help all right. That, that, that is, those are going to be the impulses you're going to have, is to hurt yourself and other people. Again, uh, they've done lots of studies now where they've looked at actually the brain structure of people that have been badly physically abused. And there are certain regions that are responsible for sort of containing behavior and affect. They're actually shrunken way down, well below the size of normal. It makes sense. It's this, these kinds of traumas affect our brain function and structure. All right. Good times. Let's talk to uh, Brian. It's Brent. Brent? What? Brent. Bryn, yeah. Oh, Bryn. Yeah. All right, Bryn. Yep. Bryn, the uh, girl, the chick. Yeah. All right, what's happening there, Bryn? Oh, um, nothing. Now right, you're 16. What's mm -hmm. what's going on? Well, um, I, I'm having some some problems with my mom. Mm-hmm. And um, she's not. It, it, it's it's more mental abuse than than physical, if anything. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's it's getting to a point where um, where where it's really depressing and um yeah what's she doing oh well, um she she gets mad really easily and i've talked to her about anger management and she just gets more mad at me <laughs> and um yeah and well, how about you don't talk to her what can you stay out of her way avoid her um well i try to talk to her and then no no well, how no. about avoiding her what? Avoiding her. Have I tried that? Okay. How about you hey, go ahead and do Brian, it? Brian, I'm going to come over there and start uh, abusing you verbally. <laughs> Would you goddamn listen to what we're saying, please? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Have fun. I see why mom is uh, so abusive. But as usual, Adam, you, they, they pull out the victimizer in you. They're good victims now, see? I mean, the victimizer. You me. start victimizing yeah. them. She's a good victim, and you just, she just evokes it in you. Screwballs give me a hard time. And That's all they're asking for. Right. You want some? <laughs> you want some four eyes? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I mean, we'll stick together. Yeah, all right, doctor. Four eyes, <laughs> as yeah. opposed to ex janitor four eyes. Ex janitor four eyes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that's what it is. Here's what happens, and here's what Drew's talking about. And it is, this happens with uh, men and women. It seems a little more with the uh, women we speak to. They for you it gets you going oh. quicker. Yeah, but for me, actually, the men. No, I get angry at the guys. You, you too. do, but I notice the women trigger you quicker, and the guys trigger me quicker. Because you always, you always kind of notice that I'm getting upset. Eh, hey, settle down, you know. Yeah. Does that you know, mean so he has mommy issues and you have daddy I, issues? I, I, probably. 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 Okay. Actually, to be fair, I have issues with Drew's dad, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've been together long enough. Or, or it's maybe stories. that I tolerate more from women and just, you know, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, Drew's a real uh, uh, coos kisser. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good term, right? I'm going to write that one down. But... Yeah, the, the poor people, they, their parents are sort of abusive, and they get angry. They get really angry, and when they talk to people, they somehow elicit that response from the people. You end up getting angry at them immediately. And it's always, it's sort of subtle. It's like, 
you have to repeat everything three times, then they say the opposite, and the next thing you know, you're yelling at them. I know, like, now I feel bad. Let, let's try Brent. First thing they do, by the way, and this is ironic, but it always gets me mad, is they have names that are a little bit off, and they correct you on it. Yes. That's the number one yes. thing. It, do they rename themselves something? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely. They, they always want to, well, they always correct you on something at the opening. I mean, yes, the nature of the right question. out of the right yeah. out of the shoot. Yeah, like yeah. An, angry people so do this. Instead go, of you, you say, "Okay, Andrea," and no, it's Andrea. No, or it's, right, or yeah, that's go, exactly they'll, they'll right. Uh, Brian has a question about uh, Adam, uh, mom controlling her anger. Like, no, I have a question about her. You know, whatever. And then they repeat it and back. They repeat to you. the question. Uh, yes, they immediately get you angry. Right, Brian. Yes. I'm going to try again with you. Okay. All right. So, how about avoiding your mother? Avoiding her. No, hey. I try, but, well, but it seems that whatever I do, it doesn't seem right. Yeah, but if you're not around her, you just you just sort of find activities away from the home, get focused on getting out of there, going to college, and yeah. being away from her. Yeah, that's basically what I want to do. I want to get out of here soon. That is a smart move, because you're not really going to change her, it sounds like. And it sounds yeah. like you're engaged in a dance with her that is pretty... Uh, Pretty dysfunctional. It's not gonna. You're not gonna have any winning. Sit. Yeah, any my winning sister. This my, my, my sister tried, and that didn't work. Either. And you might, you know, get yourself some therapy or some sort of group support. So you have somewhere you can turn with your feelings yeah. about her. Do, do you have? A, is your dad around? Um, no, he's not. No. Do you? So you go to high school, right? Uh huh. And are you a decent student? What? Are you a decent student? Yes, I am. I'm a good student. All right. And are you involved with things at school? Yeah, I'm involved with tons of things. All right. That's keep there. that going. Yeah. Do not expect for good things from your mom. You need to find support elsewhere. Well, I, I know it sounds, uh, it's great advice. It sounds like, uh, I don't know, passing the buck or not being responsible. But yeah, I didn't get along with my parents too great when I was in high school. I just avoided them, really. I mean, they weren't abusive alcoholics or anything. I, I just didn't have that much to say to them. So, you know, I went to school all day. And then when I was done with school, I went to football practice. I got home at 6.30 at night. And I took my dinner and went and ate it, and I went in my room and watched TV and beat off. <laughs> Not in that order. And then beat off again. Then I'd and get up at 7 and go to school again. I would never saw him. And Jesse had a point about how he learned from his spinal cord injury how important relationships are. Could you speak to this? What? Yeah, it's that all about love point. now. You, just, yeah. you know, it's more but about... It was, mom's gone, though. Mom, mom is a pain in the ass. Are there other relationships you learn to rely on? Are there other ways to develop intimacy and contact? And, just friends. talking to people, yeah, friends, going, you know, just music to me is a, an outlet to just find out, like, myself and be alone and just see where I am. And and then having girls around, you know, and going out and finding love. Yeah, but, <laughs> but see, most of these guys, especially the guys we're talking about, couldn't... Uh, couldn't get laid with, uh, you know, like a, a two, 10 gallons of ether and like a 60-pound sack of Viagra and roofies and uh, duct tape and handcuffs. They, they, well, couldn't, they wouldn't do it. Still couldn't, still couldn't get laid. Yeah. I mean, when you're older, it's great. But in high school, it just get involved with your high school, get involved with sports or the band or the drill team or whatever it is, and just never come home. And then when you come home, you just sort of say hi to your parents. You don't get in their face. You don't cause them any trouble. You go do your homework, and you go to bed, and you start the next day. And before you know it, you're offered some uh, liberal college. And you come back like your sophomore year and announce you're gay. And that's since they to the roof, and it's all even done. Or you, you can, just, like Adam, live at home, and they'll, they'll have you, you know. Eventually, your stepmom will kick you out of the garage. Put you out in the garage, and you'll be crapping <laughs> in, a, in a popcorn tin like Adam did. Decorative popcorn Everyone tin. Everyone has something they love, you know. You just got to find and that. Adam, it was that popcorn tin. Yeah. That was a real good time. And getting help in the bathroom, right? Right, in the motor. I didn't have a bathroom, actually. <laughs> no, it's a popcorn I, I, tin. But I, I wanted to pee in a popcorn tin. It was no. a bathroom. In the and now room. he wants to, you know, my helper to come help him, right? Well, well, off it's, the it's popcorn tin. It's a compensation oh. for the misery. Does he get popcorn before or what? Well. Free popcorn? I'll tell you that. I would stay away from the popcorn. Yeah, stay away from point. the popcorn, yeah. It just does not sound appetizing anymore. And no, I did no. I did not go mm. number one into the popcorn. No, you did not doubt. I had the, the whole yard for that. Chocolate popcorn. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, take a little Sounds break. Sounds yummy. We'll be back. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam, that's Drew. Noodles just called me the hardest working man in show business. 
Hard to argue with noodles, you know? He's a genius, <laughs> this kid. Uh, this, uh, see, his glasses work on him. But uh, noodles, I was <laughs> noticing those glasses. Those are very thick glasses. I mean, those are serious glasses. They are, yeah. What is your, what is your I've vision? I've been called the, the blindest man in, uh, in uh, show business today. Yeah, what are, uh, what are those? I, I don't know. I'm just bad. I have just really bad eyesight. I asked uh, the doctor one time, you know, uh, am I farsighted or nearsighted? He says, well... Technically, you're farsighted, but really neither. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, had, I had that laser eye surgery. It worked. You did? Yeah. yeah. You were nearsighted. Yeah, I couldn't. But, I mean, I couldn't see far. Now, yeah. would that would that work for noodles? Uh, that uh, laser yet, stuff? Huh? Yeah, I, it might be too far for him. Too far gone. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Well, because yeah. so, you know, when I was looking into contact lenses too, they make mm. them. You know, they make them up to like plus seven, plus eight now, and I'm like, what am I? Like, oh nine. man, you're yeah. plus like plus ten plus. Jesus oh, Christ. So. All right. Yeah, the glasses work for you, though. Yeah. Now, but if if you, if you when you wake up in the morning and they're not on your head, oh, what, what first, do you see? That's the first thing I do is pick my glasses up and put them on before I'm even awake. And the last thing I do right before my head hits a pillow, yeah, I do I that too. Though I can just imagine, and my and mine's not that bad. If, if we're, but if you under- know, there's times when we're on the on tour on the you know on a bus or whatever, and. And I'm hammered going to going to bed, you know, after whatever. We do a show, and it's that a good happens. show. We go out and get hammered. Yeah, it does more often than it needs to happen. But <laughs> I'll wake up, and my glasses are just gone somewhere, you know? And that's the worst thing. And I can't find them, so i gotta get, uh, I got to get somebody like Sonny to help me find mm-hmm. my glasses. Now, know? what would you, around, what would you see? Yeah. I mean, could you not? I mean, what would you see? Let's... let's Let's like, see. I can't see their faces at all. Really? Yeah, I, I can't, can't see their faces. See. I can't make out expressions. Drew just took I can't, the glasses Exactly. Off. I can't make uh, out expressions. I, I can, and I can see eyes, nose, but not well. You wow. Can right. see. And I can't read Thank anything on, on any of the papers here. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, good times. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, the glasses, they, they work, worry. though. They're cool on you. So, John? Yeah. You're 20? Yep. What's up? Not a lot. You're uh, paraplegic? Yes, that's correct. What happened? Um, I have schizophrenia. I hallucinate very badly. I wasn't diagnosed. I uh, thought I'd wake up the next morning and go to a party and jumped off a bridge, tried to kill myself one night. Wow. And yeah. what what'd you land on? Uh, concrete. Oh, oh bad geez. times. Bad times. And uh, how high was the bridge? You know, 20, 30 feet. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And how long ago was that? That was February 14th this year. Oh, so it's uh, Valentine's fa- Day. Fairly recent. Yeah, my wedding huh? anniversary, too. Yeah. Jesus. Where did that take place? Where was that? In Olympia, Washington. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, now, how are you making the adjustment? Um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just in a nursing home trying to get a pressure sore healed up. Mm. And I figured that done. I'm moving out into a friend of mine's house. He's going to help take care of me. And um, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about this life rolls on thing, see if there's any new stuff with the spinal cord and cell research. Um, and wondering if that Viagra stuff actually works because, right. you know. <laughs> Are you a complete or incomplete? Um, complete, I think. You think? What's the difference between complete and incomplete? It has some movement below the injury or, or not? Can yeah, you move I your legs at all? I movement or? in my legs. I can't, I can't stand on them or lift them up or anything, but I can feel the muscles moving. You have some really? wacky sensations down there, too? Yeah. Do you feel? Um... A little bit of sensation, and sometimes no, and sometimes yes. But like I'm, I'm doing pretty good right now. I can feel myself touching my leg, and I can move it a little bit. How's the I schizophrenia can, doing? Uh, I take medicine for it. I take Geodon, mm. and I don't hallucinate or have those thoughts anymore. So I'm doing hmm. pretty good with that. Hmm. Oh, good. Yeah, sure, it's, are they know for sure. Sh- they're they're, they're suspecting schizophrenia. Or they know for sure it is. Um. I don't know. We haven't really done any, like, tests or anything. You're not a drug addict? You weren't doing a bunch of drugs? No, not a drug addict, not anything. Just right. uh, probably been schizophrenic my whole life and just right. never knew it, never okay. knew that I was different. Okay. And well, schizophrenia sets in for males, too, it seems 20. like. Yeah. yeah, it was it was pretty bad. All right. I, I'd be having a conversation with you and, like, trying to hold three other conversations at the same time with, like, people that weren't there. And wow. Having uh, a lot of paranoid things too like the uh the little flame boy like you see in cartoons or something little shadow of a flame thing like a little smoky guy running around wow and i would freak out because there was fire and i was at a target store one time 
and was very sure that it was the the target of a uh, nuclear weapons uh, testing site or something. Well, or I mean, to be fair, you name you name your, you name your store Target. <laughs> You're kind of asking for trouble yeah, in this right. uh, yeah. political climate, are you not? And yeah. I crack up about it now, but I was running around telling everybody that there was going to be bombs dropping. And everybody no was speed, huh? John, no After speed. After a while, I could talk to myself and, like, the other, like, um... It's still really putting a big there. bullseye right on the sign, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're asking was, for trouble. It was definitely the side of and everything. Uh, all right, so, done. hey, John, listen, yeah. listen. Why don't you go on the uh, website and check it out? All right, I'll have to go to the library for that because I don't have a computer. All right. You're still early in your injury, you know. It's only about five months, so. Yeah. I mean, things could come back. You might be able to walk again. You never know. I don't. What What level? Uh, Eight or something like that. T8. T8. That's not really lumbar. Why? Yeah, Where's yeah. the T? How, how does it break down, the spinal column? What are the numbers? Where do they start? 7C. Start where? C1. Yeah, where? Up here. Is okay. Weird, uh, Starting at the top. Uh, I don't know if it starts from the bottom or from the top. So C1 is up higher. It's, C1 is where your yeah. your skull attaches okay. to your spinal cord. And then goes down. That's the, one, that's the one that, that's got a little... I'll get you the pictures. All right. I don't want to see uh, any right, pictures. It's, got, it's, got, it's one they, they fracture when they hang you. They put oh, that they doing when... into your brain with that one. Oh, yeah, good times. Usually you'll die. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, yeah, you can't breathe or anything at the upper upper so, surface. So you, you bust that one up, it's bad times. So how many of these Cs do you have? Seven. Seven. And then okay. you have 12. 12 T. of the T's. Okay. Wait a minute. You got the C's and the T's? And thoracic, the thoracic is T. Right. Cervical is C. Uh. You have seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar. Right. And then you have S, sacral. But but do they start at the top of the C's and move down to the, the, T's. the T's and then the, what's lumbar? At the bottom? No, lumbar. The higher the you are, the less you have. That's uh, the less movement you like, have. The, um, yeah, closer right. to your spa uh, the the base of your you know head mm -hmm. skull, that's the least. Like that Christopher you have. Reeves, like a C two or something. Yeah. So he's way up there. Yeah. Way ooh, up. Ooh, how, ooh, we got a, how many? Uh, how many? Uh, how many vertebrae do you have? Does right. one have? Five, twelve, twenty-four. Twenty-four. Right. I don't well, know. Plus, I, not, I, not including sacral. So. Uh, oh, well, if you want to count the sacral, <laughs> that's, that's a different show right there. All right, we'll take ourselves a little break. Drew's going to uh, open his anatomy book and uh, count up the vertebra on the uh, pretend man, and we'll be back. All right, well, that is just about it. So basically, you know, life rolls on. Just log on to my website. And I do motivational speaking. If you ever want me to come out to your school, just check out my website, sign up on the guest book, and email me and let me know what you want. And just come out to the events and support Life Rolls On and Spinal Cord Research and theywillsurfagain.com. And I want to thank the offspring of this event for me. It really means a lot, a big you know, big band like that coming out to support. Well, you're doing all the work, man. It's, it's fun for us. We're uh, stoked to be part of it. I want to thank... Uh, Jesse and uh, Noodles for coming in here tonight, and uh, when you guys uh, get the uh, album out uh, early in the year, come back on Definitely and uh, yeah. plug, plug, plug Thanks, away. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. See ya. Yeah, Drew's a real uh, uh, coos kisser. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.